six-story volcano. It's something like lava. I mean, it's molten. It runs from one area to another, and whatever it touches, it'll set on fire. And we're learning more about what caused the fire. My concern was just getting everybody out of the building. Scott Ivey was on the very floor where the fire broke out. Close enough, he was hospitalized for smoke inhalation. It was totally full of smoke. Workers say electricians were wiring in a specialized machine, but those electricians went to lunch. Power was supposed to be shut off to that area when they left. Well, I have to disagree because I actually went over and shut the panel box off myself, and it was on when I, sh I mean, I shut it off. Meanwhile, we're finding out more about alternative plastic. We've learned OSHA is investigating the company on safety complaints. There's been OSHA investigators down here twice in the last two months, I believe. These are some of the same complaints OSHA cited them for in 1996, when the company was found to have 17 violations. Did you feel safe inside that building working there? Absolutely not. On top of that, fire marshals say there was no working sprinkler system when the fire broke out and moved in for an extended stay. And that was Brian Hamrick reporting. Meantime, a voluntary shelter has been set up at South Dearborn Middle School since last night. But as of about a half an hour ago, no one was there. We will have more on this story. The Lieutenant Governor of Indiana toured the plant today in the area around it. And Jennifer Steiner was there. Jennifer? Well, Carol, the Lieutenant Governor wanted to get an idea of the situation here at the scene of the fire. And just to give you an idea, I was out here yesterday. I stood in this exact same spot. It's a residential area, just a few blocks from the scene of the fire. Yesterday, over my shoulder, you could see thick, heavy black smoke. Today, you can see it's barely visible. So things certainly are looking a whole lot better. This morning, however, was a very different story. The fire seemed to get worse late last night when pallets of plastic outside the building caught fire. And earlier today, the smoke was black and could be seen for miles. Early this afternoon, Indiana's lieutenant governor took a tour of the fire scene, flying over by helicopter and speaking with firefighters and environmental officials on the ground. Hard to pound when you see that fire, when you see that black smoke rolling from the air. Your immediate concern is for uh, all the small businesses in the area and, of course, for the residents, all of the residents of the community. The lieutenant governor pledged to do what she could to help the community of Greendale recover from this fire. She also pledged to return the favor to Ohio and Kentucky, who she says has come to the state of Indiana's rescue. Now, again, the smoke situation here is looking a whole lot better, but there's still a lot of concern among residents here about the plastics that are burning and what that could mean for their health. Coming up at 6 o'clock, we'll talk about the environmental concerns. Carol. Jennifer Steiner, live in Greendale, Indiana. Thanks. I'm Sandra Ali. And I'm Dave Wagner. Several developing stories tonight. First, a huge fire at a plastics plant in Indiana. Flames intensified last night. Huge stacks of plastic turned into giant candles with flames shooting into the night sky. There was nothing firefighters could do except keep those flames from spreading to a second building. And tonight, alternative plastics is still burning. The plants on Brown Street in Greendale, Indiana. That's in Dearborn County. Firefighters have pulled back and the building could collapse at any time. News 5's Brian Hamrick is live at the plant tonight with the very latest from there. Brian? Brian, there's some very hot temperatures out here. They are beginning to get a handle on this fire. Take a look behind me. Their break came whenever they were able to get onto this, able to get onto this. In itself, creating larger spaces, larger areas for where it's that water can travel through, reach some of the plastics material that has been burning and also reaching some of the flames as well. Here is how the state fire marshal from Indiana described the effort. Four or five hours ago that we began to put another uh, concentration of, of heavy amounts of water into this building. Uh, we were trying to convert as much as we could into steam energy to help the steam extinguish the fires, and we've been very successful on it. You notice the change in color from the, from the fierce black smoke and, and, and the energy to a, a little bit more of a, of a less energy and, and a lighter colored smoke. That's a good sign in the fire service. And frankly, the strategy has been changing throughout the past day and a half as they battle this fire. Initially, they put some foam on the fire, thinking that might help. Then they backed off and thought maybe it will just burn itself out, collapse in on itself. Now they've gone to the heavy water, and they think, frankly, by the end of the day, they'll go back to a foam material, shoot that in there as well, and try to suppress the fire that way. But as you can see, contrast that with the pictures we so showed you just a minute ago, and it's a lot less intense than it was. 
and they're starting to get a handle on it. Still about 50 firefighters on scene. They've been battling this for some almost, what, uh, 28 hours now. It's still not out, but they are making some headway. Dana? Remind us again, Dennis, of the cause of this, this incredible fire. I think at this point it was some sort of electrical... And frankly, the strategy has been changing throughout the past day and a half as they battle this fire. Initially, they put some foam on the fire. I think it's a problem. They're still trying to nail that down. They won't know exactly until they're able to, they're able to go in and, and do some sort of investigation. And that's just, frankly, impossible at this point. They do think that it was. That's been the case throughout much of the day. The video that you're uh, seeing now